We continue to set sail, everyone. Welcome back as we pursue destinations unknown, undiscovered countries of the imagination, new territories to discover, new innovations like this incredible, incredibly cool work by LB here. Artist Journal, May 30th, 2023, broadcasting to the world from Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli, and welcome back. Welcome, welcome back, and look at this super duper, incredibly cool work by LB. And it's back to this idea. We I've discussed this like maybe a hundred episodes ago on the philosophy of technology. What do they call it? There's a book. It's called The Nature of Technology, and it really is a book on the philosophy of technology and what is technology and how is it made. And so that is what kind of echoes in my mind when I look at this, because what is going on here? You have a Nintendo Glitch ROM work, which has all of a sudden been combined, keyword combined, with uh, analog video processing. And in that book, The Nature of Technology, which we should look up right now, just so you know what I'm talking about, One of the elements, one of the ways that technology develops is through combination, combination. And so, you know, you get your transistor, you get your jet engine, you know, to get your jet engine, you need the transistor, you need all these different elements that may have existed separately, but then you put them all together and you have a new piece of technology. And that's what I think of when I see this work here, because it feels uh, there's something really great about it, isn't there? And believe it or not, it's still available. There's one on secondary for five Tezos. Uh, this time I'm going to have to run and get that before it, it disappears. Uh, but a super cool work by LB. Uh, this just is, it, look at how rich it is, right? So very cool. Available for five. Five Tezos, $4.72, edition of 15, uh, Nintendo ROM corrupted with RTC, rescanned from Sony PVM. Watch out, Felix. And I might add a very nice glitch at that. Like, look at how great, even if this wasn't rescanned, it would still be a pretty nice uh, sequence. So, super cool work by LB. And here's another one that came out right before. Uh, this came out on May 22nd. I've seen a lot of this kind of crazy text here. And so here, you can almost see the curvature of the TV a little bit more, the rescan. And so this is, yeah, so here it is, just some letters. This one's a little bit more abstract, I'd say. So just very, very cool work. This was an open edition. 13 were minted at only 40 cents. So it could be an experiment. And like I was looking at LB's page here, I haven't seen a ton since. I mean, this only came out last week, but uh, this is uh, exciting. This is very exciting. I don't think I've seen this before. I mean, this is a still. So is continuing and getting some really, really interesting results there. So let's actually very quickly look up nature of technology. and see if we can find what it is and how it evolves. This looks very promising. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yeah, so the nature of technology, what it is and how it evolves. Combination. So fascinating, fascinating book. It's quite readable. I've only read the first third, but I do intend on finishing that. So again, LB combining different uh, methods and coming up with something new, at least something I've never seen before. Uh, Perhaps someone's done it before, but I've never seen it. Anyway, tomorrow uh, there's going to be a Twitter Spaces. What new art tools are you using? So that will be just a fun uh, space to bring in just, you know, I put it this way. The other day when Zaiko, Zaiko was saying she used Touch Designer, I had never even heard of that. And it looks like an awesome tool. So here's a chance for people to share, you know, tools that they're excited about, get some public speaking in, which is crucial as an artist, and just hang out 
and hang out with a bunch of uh, artists, collectors, people on the scene here. So come join us, uh, me and Rune Tune, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 3.30 in Berlin. It would be awesome uh, to see you there. And continuing on, a couple of comments I want to highlight. Mangran, the person who I believe did those uh, classical-looking works that I was saying almost had a Picasso feel. Mangran is another, this is Human Boy, Mangran is another artist I could have mentioned in the Underrated Artists podcast. Such a great style, one of the first artists I collected when I arrived in the space. And also from Retro Manny, Photoshop is about to have an intense amount of bug reports as artists start breaking things. Absolutely. I've already got the machine in motion here. The gears are turning on how I can do that. And finally, CTTV, uh, I also want to highlight here. I'm in the process. Great show as always. I'm in the process of creating socials and setting up things needed to start selling and purchasing with you all. So a new entrant. Entrant. Quick question, do you have a Discord or a community a noob like me can check out to get started in the space? So, you know, it reminds me of Adelia. Adelia has this awesome, maybe I can bring it up. Adelia has this awesome work. Uh, we can see if Adelia has new work too while we're at it. I bet she does. Uh, actually, no, Adelia's been quiet, but let me show you the work. Uh, that re relates to this Discord, this one here. So why I don't have a Discord? Because here is the crashed out person and there's the Discord notification. There are the 99, everything's maxed out. I think Adelia is probably taking a break. So anyways, that is why I don't do a uh, Discord. It's just uh, Twitter is enough and the, you know, YouTube and the Instagram and the website. So I don't do that, but if you're wondering how to get started quickly, feel free to leave questions here. I'll tell you very quickly, basically, you need to have a Binance or a Coinbase account that you need to sign up for. You probably have to do a KYC or something. Uh, then for Tezos, you buy some Tezos. And then so you have your Tezos on your Coinbase account, let's say. And then from there, you need the Kukai wallet. Let me just bring this up here without bringing up my wallet. Maybe it will bring up my wallet. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, so you need the Kukai wallet from here. And then you send your Tezos from your Binance or your Coinbase account to your Kukai wallet, and you are good to go. You can just log in, s sign in here uh, at the top, and you see profile, create settings, log out. You'll be able to sign in or sync, I think is what they have and you're basically good to go. So if you have any questions on that, let me know. Um, but it's actually surprisingly straightforward. Start with Coinbase or Binance, get some Tezos. Same thing with ETH and your wallet would be MetaMask. So, and there are a ton of uh, tutorials online or on YouTube specifically. Uh, we also heard from Jan Lucas Migon and we were discussing what tool this was. And so uh, Jan is saying it's the finger tool and I was still wondering because in Photoshop, I think the finger tool is the smudge tool. And, but if it's on uh, Procreate, then maybe it's just, it's basically a smudger. So I think it's the same thing, basically what we're saying. Uh, the, and the finger tool in Procreate is incredibly powerful. So I'm not sure if Yan is using Photoshop or Procreate, but all to say it's kind of like a smudge tool. It's, it's the finger tool. So thank you, Yan, for chiming in and glad uh, you're, uh, thank you for the nice comments. This was super interesting, uh, just on the technology front. Uh, last night, Jensen Wang of NVIDIA gave his very first live keynote in four years. The most show-stopping moment from the event was when he showed off the real-time AI in video games. A human speaks, the NPC responds in real time and the dialogue was generated with AI on the fly. So all to say, you can go into your video game and start talking to the fake characters here and they'll actually have a conversation. Uh, maybe we have volume here. Let me just see. Definitely not so good. Yeah, look at this. Hey Jen, how are you? Unfortunately, not so good. How come? 
I'm worried about the crime around here. It's gotten bad lately. My ramen shop got caught in the crossfire. Can I help? If you want to do something about... So, pretty amazing stuff going on here. So just a heads up on the tech front there and the AI front is not slowing down. It's kind of amazing how fast this is happening. Because I think two or three years ago, that would have been seen as science fiction. And now we almost take it for granted that something, once you see it, you go, of course they can do that. If ChatGPT can do it, why can't some, you know, fake character? A quick thing just on remembering the important things and playing the long game here. Unknown collector, we all make mistakes on the way. But when I'm old, I want to look back on my participation in digital art and feel proud of with which, of proud of the values I approach proud of the values with which I approached all of this. People over money, values over power, true passion over fake interest, real content over empty engagement. When you're in for these things, you're right with me. You'll find human errors but here, but never falseness. So all to say, uh, I think this is what I want to highlight. Because if you, you know, if you ever read the, you know, the coaches, like the life coaches and all that, it kind of all comes down, I would argue, to values. And that is how you <coughs> that is how you have a strong personality or a, a, a personality that's more just like grounded. So when things happen, you're not too worried about it because you have your values and you just simply go to the world with those values. And it helps you make decisions because a lot of decisions are very difficult and you're going to encounter difficult decisions in this business like the rest of your life. So the way, you know, the example, say, of values, for example, is are you willing to die for something? Let's say, say, for a member of your family or something, uh, you know, or are, are it's sort of like, you know, if you value, say, your family over your work, then you will go on that vacation with your family and not worry about necessarily the next promotion at work. Whereas if you value your work over your family, you might decide I need to go on that. Uh, I, need, I can't go on that vacation because I have to do the thing at work. And sometimes it's not that simple, but all to say that's how values help you make decisions. And so that can help you, I would argue, from the business front in order because sometimes it's, it's unclear. Sometimes you can kind of debate in your head forever, and usually values is the way to kind of help sort that out. So thank you, Unknown Collector, to just, you know, stay grounded. It helps you stay grounded. And I think this is also playing the long game uh, as well. You know, if you're just doing the empty engagement or the fake interest or the power and the money, maybe that lasts. But ultimately in the art game, time is the ultimate judge, as we've mentioned several times before. Speaking of time, Revolsky, Revel Sky, uh, I haven't seen uh, work for a while. One of the psychedelic illustrators on Tezos has been around on Tezos since at least 2021. Uh, and so new work is coming out and with some beautiful color here. And you see the, interestingly, there, it almost looks like a texture of paper. There's a real print feel to this. You even see it here with the coloring on the tongue and the lips. It's almost like a 1970s comic book, you know, uh, Ben Day dot, like Licton, you know, process or rasterizing, uh, whatever you want to call that. So it looks beautiful. And there's, it's kind of interesting, though. The coloring, I would argue, is quite digital when you see this gradient here. Technically, you could probably do that with watercolor, uh, but it is does have a digital feel to it, interestingly. So, and, and you see it maybe in the squares here, too. So uh, anyway, a cool uh, work here. You see a couple of smoking figures here going into the psychedelic object here. Uh, with the eye on the tongue and maybe some Eastern sort of iconography here. Uh, so pretty cool work from Revolsky around the world. And here is another one. This is an older one. Uh, this is not what I wanted to show. I want to show this other one. So here is just a quick look at Revolsky's work. There's not a ton. Uh, but there's maybe three or four of these psychedelic illustrators that I've seen. See, it goes all the way back to 2021. And you see the development here, too. But you also see what stayed consistent over time. Here's the other one I wanted to show you, the sun. Uh, 
which just came out a couple of weeks ago as well. So you see the development in color as well. It's a little brighter, a little bit, you know, quote unquote funner. And I was also thinking to myself as I was looking at this, how would you make this physical? And I think, and it came, I came to a weird conclusion, which is you'd almost have to uh, do the sky here. The gradient in the sky is like a kind of watercolor. Use watercolors and then put screen print over your watercolors to get these like, you know, this print texture. So just kind of a fun thought here. Anyway, uh, cool kind of phases of what look like the moon, but is the sun with a V. So interesting work here. And again, the hands with the eyes in them. So cool series here. And Inwards is the name of the series. And I think we can see it here. Look at that. Look at how great they look together. I think there's still quite a few of this first one available. Only there's still 12 left. You see the first one is already going for 38. So cool work. Uh, Lewis Osborne with an interesting, I want to say another kind of innovation or at least I don't want to call it an evolution, just experiment really with experimenting with gradients here because Lewis Osborne has such a defined illustrative style uh, it's not often, if ever, I don't remember ever seeing a gradient here. So it goes with the concept, drown out the thoughts. And so this is an addition of 25. It's on secondary for 60. And basically you can see the figure gets the headphones on and then all the noise, you know, uh, gets drowned out here. It's almost back to Adelia with her, you know, so, and then the person is happy again. So using the headphones, interestingly, to cancel out so the music cancels out the noise, drown out the thoughts. Uh, we got another one here, kind of an interesting work, uh, quick fix conceptually here. So if we let this start, so the person gets the happy face, it bounces into the computer, which has the same background here, gets you know slapped into shape here, and the you know, and then a big smile is put on and they are good to go with a little bit of editing from the computer. So kind of a funny work here. What is the title on this? A quick fix. And there's something else I want to point out technically on this. We discussed the paper and kind of saw in Rivalski, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, the use of texture. We see it with several artists, uh, Myth, Gloom Tube, and more. Uh, Bazaya. Look at what Lewis Osborne does with the texture though it is moving he takes different textures and then turns that into a gif to kind of liven up the entire space so it's an interesting technique very interesting solution finding a balance here also uh, playing with so I guess this is I was going to say this sounds like part of this feeling emotional series but it is not this was minted on hen finding a balance. And as you can see here, see here, it's the two figures and the happy and the sad. And when the sad is balancing out, uh, when the sad takes over, the person becomes sad. So kind of a metaphor, I guess, for the mental space. Again, a lot of common themes here. This I found in, uh, this I found in Lewis Osborne's collection, James Clapham, a really cool work here, kind of you know, could hang in the same room as a Ezra Eslin, but quite different, but kind of one of these chaotic, you know, three quarter, 45 degree angle views and all sorts of fun. I love the escalators here and the motorcycle going up the escalators, alligators in the mall pool, mall fountain here, and all sorts of mayhem. Interesting color scheme too, isn't it? That the people are like red or green Mall Hell, digital illustration, hand-drawn, available for 10 Tezos on primary, still 13 left, so still available there. And here's another one, Yuppie Sales Dude, also by James Clapham. And I thought this was a pretty just interesting original work. Kind of reminds me of the early Obinson works, uh, if you've been around Object or Hen for a while. And kind of reminds me of those kind of dragon works. So a cool hand-drawn uh, GIF. So pretty nice edition of 35. This came out earlier in May and this sold out at one Tezos uh, for an edition of 35, now available for eight Tezos on secondary yuppie sales dude. 
This is also an artist that I discovered from Lewis Osborne back in November. So, he, And I think I brought it up. Here it is. If you've been watching the show from November, uh, you might remember this work by Igor Kapustin. And I'll come back to the new one. So this was a work that I highlighted months ago. And I think actually Igor gave me a shout out on that when he saw the video. So that was awesome. So poker, just a really nice piece here. Now 111 Tezos. I'm not sure if I picked that up. I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Uh, here's an, And this one's going for 100 Tezos. Edition of 16, where next? Interesting little textures in the sleeve here. Also moving... Very interesting solution to add some dynamism to the composition. Also, this kind of carbonated drink here. Very interesting uh, work. And then someone just scrolling on their phone. You almost see the poker chips here. So kind of a part two of sorts, because I don't think we have too many other poker works. Very interesting. So, yeah, I think we'd have to go to another page there. So that makes, those would be, I mean, again, in the museum in your mind... This would make a great pairing on a wall, wouldn't it? Or facing each other. I was going to actually show pictures. I'm going to try and remember to do that on Thursday. I took some pictures of the Munich Pinacothek, uh, Alta Pinacothek, and the new one. Uh, so we'll bring that up in a maybe next episode. Flora Marquez, uh, one of one for 15 Tezos. Continuing to experiment with the collage and really interesting materials here with really interesting effects. Kind of a vampire figure colored or uh, drawn in here with some collage on top. Not an easy task, but making it pretty interesting. It's almost like a cape of sorts here. Tasting new flavors is a return to childhood. Maybe a metaphor for the experimentation. Tasting new flavors. Here's another one. It makes me happy to work on something that I will then give as a present. And there's almost a Peter Rabbit feel to this a little bit. Beautifully drawn here. You see the power. I mean, it looks like physical uh, illustration here, but this is, I believe, Procreate. And there it looks like a bit of a smudge. Maybe that's the finger tool that Yan was mentioning. And then interestingly, a, another kind of clothing texture put in here. And even over here on the neck, breaking the outline a little bit. And we were pointing that out on Hestrubal Waffle yesterday. It's a nice effect. Nice little shadows here, too. And one more, just to catch up a little bit with Flora. I need to go to the beach. So just a cool... This is classic, Flora. So a frog with a magician's hat. And it looks like maybe... I imagine she's doing this with her phone. It's just a guess. But I imagine she is doing this with her phone, and this looks like the picture of a wall, right? Or, you know, a green, a wall with green paint. So interesting, uh, altogether uh, interesting results here. I need to go to the beach. And this is an edition of one, and this was picked up by Co for 15 Tezos. Matias La Plata with a couple of really nice tickets. These look hand-drawn. I'm starting to not know anymore. Uh, what is hand-drawn and what is not. This could easily be Procreate, as physical as it looks. Uh, burn this and participate in raffles of incredible drawings. So this looks like maybe Elvis Presley. And this is the first ticket created, and it is an airdrop to all Maleducado cardholders. So that is an earlier series by Matias La Plata. You can burn it before Wednesday to participate in a free edition of the new drop, Spiritual Cartoons, or you can hold it for future drops. That's a funny thing. When I get these tickets, I didn't get one because I didn't have one of the Maleducado cards. But when Gogolitis gave me one, I just want to keep the ticket. I think I'd be the same with these. These, these look great. Here's another one. Uh, drop ticket number one, Alfred E. Newman. So this ticket will be used to burn and participate in raffles for new drawings. This is the first ticket created and it is an airdrop to all Alfred E. Newman card number 13 holders. So very cool, playing with the mechanics here. Matias La Plata, and that is always interesting too, uh, from even just a conceptual perspective here, and then it makes you create new kinds of works here. I love how it's kind of erased, which makes it look physical, but I don't even know anymore. I'm not sure this is uh, phys uh, physical. It could be digital. Kappa Sage, looking for the, looking for the stolen triumph. Look for what is yours, look for what you deserve, look for it. And here is a Kappa figure, 
and a whole team of people behind. Here you got some gold teeth and Kappa Sage and everything. So interestingly, the faces, the balaclavas have no eyes or mouth. So an interesting move and some risque figures here and V-Lone, Vlone, Teddy Bear and everything. Just an interesting work as ever. Always an ambitious composition. Edition of 10, available for 10 Tezos, still five left. So you can still get that. And here's another one we missed, Employee of the Month from Myth, the Myth 2023 NFT Factory times McDo meme. I've seen a few McDonald's uh, works here, so I'm not sure if something's going on, but there's the myth as general manager at McDonald's. So that is pretty cool. And a rare, you know, Ronald McDonald uh, uh, myth work. So very cool. And there is that purple dinosaur. Also, what is his name again? Also from McDonald's. Uh, and of course, the homunculi, as we were discussing, the, the small people and a cigarette, for good measure. Uh, 15 Tezos edition of 40 from the myth. And this is really cool. This came out a couple of weeks ago. I missed it. Coffee Break, the myth cup. And this is by Martin Joe. Let me see if I can get it to work. So you can see the lemon head. This is the myth character. And there is the myth. More myth references, the colored lighter, the lemon head, the myth, the clouds, all of it. So a cool homage, caffeinated tribute to the legend, the myth by Martin Joe, uh, Martin Joe's coffee break. Cool work. Only two Tezos and 18 left. This is a work by Tokyo Love, and this is a edition of 100, two have been minted for 0.069. And I th what is the title on this? I think they're futuristic, uh, digital deep dreamscape looms, Shinjuku. Okay, so we don't know, but it's been pointing out a whole bunch of futuristic, I think like Hong Kong 2049 type works, if I remember right. Cool colors. Reminds you of, uh, what is her name, who also does these kind of futuristic works that uses the same palette. I wish I could remember her name. I will for next episode. So anyways, Tokyo Love with a cool work here, Shinjuku. And check out this kind of concept piece by Heidi Roquette. Heidi Roquette. I'm still not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. I haven't gotten any uh, uh, feedback to change how I'm pronouncing it. So anyways, uh, I thought this was kind of great. I, I think... I, I think I remembered seeing on his Twitter that this was his last mint on hen, but I could be wrong about that. But it would it would kind of make sense based on the content. A GIF referencing how what GIFs are and how they're made with an old, uh, you know, user interface here. GIF.docs. So pretty cool. Hit et nunc forever. So hen forever. And again, uh, playing with the capitals and the small case letters. Available for 13 Tezos, and I think this is already done because I probably had this open. It's probably a lot more. Now it's 42, so things happen fast over here. Edition of 18 now by Haiti Rocket. Look at this, Goyong Arts. Good morning, my friends. Let's start Goyong's Nature Index. So this is cool. So we see almost like a Game Boy of sorts, but Nature... And these massive pixels, which have a real texture to them. And we also have an apple in here and everything. Do you like Pokemon? I was a huge fan of Pokemon. To be honest, I'm still keeping up with the news. Among them, I like to see the Pokedex when the new Pokemon series comes out. It's the reason why I'm telling you that I'm going to make my own index. I will fill it with animals and plants in my own style. And those animals and plants will become will come up in the new one, in, one of one and additions that will be made in the future. I think I could sol solidify my own unique style and having fun with work by making it. So the plants and animals will be re revealed one by one after this post is posted. posted. Uh, what other animations and drawings could I make in the future? So anyways, very cool. It looks great as ever, uh, this combination of this pixelation and this kind of beautifully uh, rendered drawing and almost a physical feel to the texture. Here too, 
This is someone called Pixelair, Pixelar, and kind of a cryptic work here. A lot of pixelation. Uh, it's, so it's a very interesting thing. It's a great contrast. This pixelation, when you change, it, when you combine it, contrast it with these other areas, say with the writing here, or with just this kind of video that's put in, and everything, and then in here. So just a nice work by Pixel Pixel R. Abstractions, color words, concept, visual design, hack, remix, sound. So cool. Very cool. Notorious Man XTZ, Travel to You. So another horizontal pixel art work by Notorious Man XTZ, a cool, unusual uh, viewpoint of a plane flying over what looks like water with some interestingly fuzzy clouds. So cool animation here. One Tezos edition of 50. Here is a cool work by Zoxo, Comet Adventure. And this has a bit of a video game feel to it. And keeping with, like they use the star a lot. And here it's starting to feel like Mario Brothers or something, but it's the star moving through. So very interesting work and it continues to go. And look at that. So 14 second loop here, available for 230, $2.16. And there are 18 left. Only five have sold, so pretty interesting work. Comet Adventure by Zoxo. And Sabato, Second Cathedral. Uh, this was funny. Uh, so I think what he was doing, he tweeted out something. I should have brought up the tweet, but I think what he was doing was kind of the scariness sometimes of the whole hell and heaven thing, I think is what he was referencing to. And so the this cathedral here, the second cathedral, has a bit of a, it's kind of personified here, anthropomorphized. And here we have some bats on the side. So, and then a tongue with jaws at the entrance here. So it kind of looks like a cathedral I saw in Munich, actually, except the towers were a little taller. Uh, second cathedral available for 10 tezos, 10 cents. 23 are left, 17 have sold, I believe unless Sab is holding on. Okay, yeah, there are a few. Yeah, so 10 have sold. Cool work. And we've seen this before, but it is now available. So FYI, Capin, look at how great this looks. I was showing this, I think, an earlier version on uh, Twitter, where Capin posted this like a month ago, maybe more. So again, just stunningly beautiful, kind of mystical GIF art. You can't hear anything at all. It's called Inside. Very, very cool. Available for 0 0.03 ETH, five or left. Another one by Green Ginger Amplified Metro. So just a cool, another, kind of looks like a cityscape with some uh, abstraction involved. So just kind of cool, interesting colors too. Uh, yeah, Amplified Metro, available for two Tezos, four or left. And here's one by Nicholas Dietrich. Dietrich. Unconscious observer, two contradictory versions of reality can exist at the same time. So this looks like a security camera here and maybe some sort of natural vines entrance of a certain kind here on, on an entrance. And yeah, just interesting. I'm not sure what's going on here. Kind of a mysterious work. It almost looks like a face to a certain degree and the vines almost look like hair and an interesting gradient at the bottom. And look at this. You can almost see at the bottom right, that's probably every color I'm assuming that was added into this work. This is almost like your palette. So that is a cool addition there as well. Interesting work, 240 by 10, 240 pixels squared or times 10 in scale, Remy Fort. So remember, this is the artist that does the scripting. This artwork was generated by a Python script I designed, uh, made in my studio in Lyon, France. So there were a few of these. And remember, Remy Fort is also the person who is doing the uh, pen plotting. So interesting work here. So again, programmed. Here's another one. I dreamed I dream 21. And one more with programming here. I dreamed I dream 22. So it'll be interesting to see if she uses the pen plotter for any of these. That would be fascinating. 
Look at this, Wasteman Goldminovich. I thought this was quite interesting. Uh, taking what looks like, a, you know, maybe uh, some pixels or almost like kid pics or something. I guess AI is used in there, maybe, uh, according to the tags there. Uh, but, you know, just making an interesting abstraction here. Uh, upsetting expectations. This is about AI, Pastor, Non-Peaceful, Silent Machines 1. Cool work auction, at auction for a Tezos, which again is where you're going to find some of your best deals here. See how much time is left. If this loads up, and maybe it doesn't. Uh, oh, it's. I guess it just finished. No buyers for a Tezos for a one of one. That was a cool abstract there. Uh, Surfing the Glitch by Silva Santuz. I don't think we've seen their work before. And so more Nintendo Glitch ROM. And here is a cool, I think this is a Pokemon figure. So all sorts, uh, yeah, Pokemon Yellow Version Special Pikachu Edition. Available for five Tezos. There are four left. So more cool Glitch ROM. Here's another one. I like how tiny this is. I'm going to magnify it for you. Uh, here's a different take on Glitchrom here as well, just like kind of an interior here of a, someone's office or library or something. Uh, interesting just interior. 8-bit uh, kit with another, it kind of looks like a Glitchrom, but maybe it's just a GIF. Uh, mixed signals, disposable emotions. And so here you got a bear and some you know, iconogra UI iconography of maybe go back or something. And then some pixel art mixed signals. So interesting experimentation here from 8-bit kit, edition of 12. It looks like it's sold out. Acid Soup has it on secondary for $16.90. Uh, was available for two Tezos. Last one went to Sabato for four. So cool work there. Estelle Flores. This is a seven minute video, so we can't play the whole thing. Edition of five, there is one left still, um, but I'm gonna take you through some of it so you can see Different renderings here. And then I think we even got into some more glitch ROMs. So a lot of experimentation with these Nintendo ROMs. That's pretty cool too. Kind of has a Warhol feeling to it, the way that it gets broken up here. So again, this is seven minutes. So here you see it looks like glitch ROM here. But through a filter. I mean, so kind of similar in its own way to what we were seeing with LB because this looks like treated glitch ROM. So that is quite interesting, isn't it? If someone else is doing that. So I'm sure it's not the first time that it's been thought. Uh, in, anyway, interesting. Let's just see processual video of Patrick Nagel painting glitched on a basic ID emulating NES Famicom. So maybe it's the same idea as we were seeing with uh, LB there. Very cool work. Renki with a painterly abstract, Hasu Gaiki. So again, putting out work, I think, every day, at least one work, and pretty nice uh, painterly abstract here, pretty nice animated abstract, really cool work here. Nice textures, uh, available for 10 Tezos. There's one left, and one has sold. So maybe holding on to the others. Uh, so owners, so Renki owns all 10, but one went here. So anyways, maybe that's not updated. Looks great. Moral of the story, it looks great. Here, Coda Nekazono, filament number seven. So this is that new series that Coda was working on. So playing with these kind of textures or just shapes, abstraction, whatever you want to call it, pretty nice results. I mean, the colors are totally awesome here. Uh, let's just bring this up here and see it loads up. So of course, this was the other series continuum. So here's just an update quickly. You can sort of see what's going on here. And then filaments. I mean, what is going on? You see, it's it's almost like a string or something. Lines are being dragged of some kind through all the filaments here. So a different technique, a different process on the filaments turning out very nicely there, as you can see. Here is another just interesting animated abstract work by Nicholas Sassoon, RGB Research. And I thought this looked pretty cool as well. Again, pretty original and interesting to see how these colors kind of come in and out, kind of phasing a little bit. Very nice piece. Interesting piece. 
Uh, mech.txt with a signature and a little explanation here, turning it into a GIF. Mech is written on the old bronze statue, so you can see mech here. And so this is for a signature series. What is it called? Artist Signature Collection. And there are several artists here. You've probably seen these before. We looked at Capin, which was awesome. Pixology, that's a pretty cool one by P1. Maybe there's volume on that too. How cool will this be? Wow. So this is P1 signature. That is pretty awesome too. Available for 590. Sometimes they have high uh, edition numbers and then they get burned. So uh, don't sleep on it if you like the work and you want to buy it. Uh, new work by Tom Bombadil, or by Bombadil, uh, doing what looks like a nuclear explosion here with the guy, you know, the main character here with the skull on his balcony looking on at, at it in the distance. And it looks like it's a C with a nuclear explosion test. So, you know, capturing the zeitgeist a little bit. And there is his laptop with some flashing lights on it. So cool work here by Bombadil. And also a sunset here of a different kind, a normal one, Glitchin AI Tatori by India Robot. Cool, uh, just kind of animation, cool kind of AI pixels is almost what I want to call this. What I also find interesting about this is how the top is static and the bottom is dynamic. I guess that's the C, right? So that really gives the impression of the C. So that is an addition of 25 for five Tezos. There are 18 left. And another one here, Dead Celebration by LB on secondary, I assume, for 44. Oh, primary for 44, addition of 15. Uh, so pretty cool work, though. So another kind of other work by LB, not in the glitch ROM work, Dancing Skeletons here. I quite like this part here, how he kind of has this, you know, infinite regress of a certain kind here. And it just kind of adds a layer of interest, I'd say, to the work. Uh, and just compositionally, it's kind of interesting as well. Very nice textures on the side here, as we can see. Interesting color too. And here's another work. Let me do this. This is Stay. So, a cart so an anime, it looks like, that is processed through visual, through analog hardware. So more and just getting pretty good at all this glitching. So cool work there. That is an addition of eight for four Tezos. And a few interesting kind of unusual works from Popple with a narrator with in collaboration with Explainer and Explainer Gallery. So a narrator, Popple and Explainer Gallery, they have these three kind of anime pixel artworks. And you can sort of see here at the bottom right, you can sort of start to see Popple's, uh, you know, patterning and maybe this uh, text here, although I'm not sure. So this looks like a collaboration between artists here. This is not sort of typical uh, Popple content, I don't think. Uh, but anyways, cool work here. Uh, and interesting just collaboration, interesting borders too. They did three of them. So a cool uh, series here. Again, you see what looks like, you know, from that uh, Satellitenstadt series here in the background, kind of similar textures. I imagine that's Popple. And it looks like there's four, actually, love. Each one stands for a uh, letter in love. Here's another one, a link. So again, we see that texture in the background and an anime figure here. So interesting in the chains, in the framing, in the framing here. So anyways, very interesting work. Uh, buy for 17 on this one. And we're almost done here, Ace of Cups. Uh, so we've moved from, I believe we'd call it the major arcana to the minor arcana in the Cat Tarot. So, I mean, continuing, Manadol, uh, you know, persisting here. I'm impressed at the ambition. I mean, if they do an entire Cat Tarot, it would be pretty stunning. Because it could be tempting to do just the uh, major arcana, but here we go. So the Ace of Cups. Courtesy of Manadol, not for sale yet, I do not believe. And another, so I'm not sure if that baseball yesterday was movable, but Kurt Hustle Collective has a AR hot dog. So continuing with the baseball theme. So we're having a good time here in the ballpark. Uh, leave your life for a better one, augment, augmented reality pet. 
courtesy of Curtin Hustle Collective, still available for three Tezos. And a nice kind of wagging tail there. Cool work there. And a new one by Tooks that was kind of interesting, Winter Sanctuary. So sometimes Tooks will use object as a experimental ground. So here is seems to be kind of combining previous series a little bit, it feels like. So pretty interesting work. AI art, of course, interesting title. And again, usually uh, this work is very uh, AI, uh, uses a lot of AI, including, I believe, ChatGPT. So that is Tooks. And here's another AI work by, this time with Santiago, just an update. I thought this one was pretty interesting with all the arteries and it screams body without it being a body. I mean, you can sort of read a body here, maybe a neck here, but ultimately uh, just another sci-fi body. Geometry of the broken soul of our era. So a cool work from the What Does It Mean to Have a Body series. Ilya Bliznets, an edition of one for 35 Tezos. So continuing to experiment over here as well. Interesting experimentation, someone sitting. A new series of works captures my unstable state. I add a little darkness to my bright and fabulous world. So nice bright colors here. I guess these are the flowers here. Isolation. I do not want this collection. I do not know what this collection is about. Let's just zoom out and look at the collection a little bit. And there it is. So playing with stuff. Now Ilya Bliznets, if you remember, because we've looked at their work before, I think it's AI and digital painting. Right. The, the I think the galleries, office, and everything. Yeah, so interesting work from Ilya Bliznets. Continuing on, this is in the physical world. I mentioned this gallery. This is a gallery actually that my friend Charlie, that she got on, uh, Kristen Hjelliger, if I'm pronouncing that right, I believe it's uh, 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 Norwegian. A gallerist, I believe. Uh, they have an opening actually at their gallery in Berlin coming up Thursday. This should be great. Uh, let me just... So this is the artist here, Rune Christensen, solo show opening Thursday in Berlin, Wildflowers. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out. This looks really cool. And here you can see the artist here with the work. So pretty interesting and exciting. So even nice frames and everything. Pretty cool work, isn't it? So, and there it is on display installation. And I believe that is all I have for you today. So thank you for joining me. And until next time, take care. See you on Twitter Spaces tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.